Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rebecca Hobbs and I am the owner of Bijou Floral Design and the Bijou Flower School. So here in the UK, the weather can be described as disgusting. Um, we kind of went from a really wet spring to a heat wave and then autumn. We don't seem to have had summer at all. Um, yesterday, however, we did have some sunshine, so I took advantage and went to the garden and picked a lot of flowers. Um, you guys really seem to enjoy the British grown bridal bouquet. So today I thought I'd show you how to make a low compote arrangement using British flowers. Um, I'm just going to put this one on my dining room table. Um, it's great and miserable again out there today um, so just to give the house a little bit of colour but you can make this for a wedding you can make it for a gift or you can just make it for yourself whatever you'd like to do so um, as always we are making it foam free um, I have a gorgeous low bowl here um, this is from the gear um, range in the UK um, and it's in a colour called Moon. Um, it's a, a creamy colour. It's very, very pretty. Um, quite elegant and it will go with most decors. So let's get started. The mechanics that I'm using for this design um, is just some chicken wire and then I have a metal frog in the bottom of the vessel, um, which I've attached with some floral fix which is this, it's a bit like blue tack, um, but it's, it's green and it's water resistant, so that'll keep that nicely stuck in there. And I also have a Lazy Susan. Um, my Lazy Susan isn't great, it's got very wet over the summer season, so it's not turning the way that it should, um, but it's great to be able just to, you know, move things around and see how your design is working. I am going to start by just popping some foliage into the compote. I have some hazel, I have some wigila. Um, wigila actually has a pink flower on it, so we can use some of that, or you can snip the flowers off if you don't want to. And we also have um, some beach. The design is going to be quite light and airy. Um, I always find by putting the foliage in first, it just helps um, to create a little bit of a crisscross in the design. So when you start putting in your flowers, it will help to support them. Um, when you're using chicken wire, that is kind of one of the issues. If you try to put um, small or thin stemmed flowers in straight away, you will find that they just won't hold where you're putting them. You kind of need to get this base in before you start. Um, don't worry too much about shape at this point. That will come with the flowers. The Wagila is lovely um, because it has this kind of variegated leaf. So it does give you um, a bit of contrast just with it instead of it being all just green. Also grows extremely quickly. Um, the bush that I cut this from, I only planted it a couple of years ago um, and it is going absolutely mental out in my garden.
little bit of shape, not too much. But the vast majority of the mechanics have now been covered, um, which means you're not going to use loads of flowers trying to cover up that chicken wire. The first flowers that I'm going to start with are some more outline flowers um, and a few bigger blooms. Um, so I have some hydrangeas, um, I have some limelights and these um, panacotta, I think that's how you say it. Um, I rescued these off the floor, they had been snapped unfortunately with all the wind and the torrential rain that we've had and they were looking a little bit sad but actually um, cut them, put them in some nice clean water and then overnight they've really perked up, they're really nice and firm so if you see something on the ground always worth trying to see if you can revive it and then I also have some gorgeous, gorgeous snaps. Um, these are the Madam Butterfly variety. Um, I actually got them from a lady called Zoe Woodward. Um, if you are on Instagram, um, she is worth a follow, especially if you're new to kind of growing and garden design. Um, she sells seeds and I really, really recommend um, watching her for a bit of inspiration. Um, so we're just going to start by popping in these flowers. Take off any heads that aren't looking um, so favourable anymore. Uh, this is only for myself so I'm not too, too concerned um, the quality and how they look. Um, but obviously if I was doing this for a wedding I would be much more about how everything is is looking. I'm going to pop some down below here and again I'm grouping my flowers okay so everything um, is kind of how I would expect it to grow within the garden. The other thing um, which is really, really important, which I think um, we overlook, is it's good to get some flowers down low. It's what we call um, recession. Um, it helps just add a bit of depth and um, some interest in there. They smell gorgeous as well, um, those snapdragons or anthuriums. Um, the ones that we get imported don't smell at all, but the British grown definitely, definitely do. So I'm just going to finish popping in those. I also have some um, Nicotania. Um, brilliant, brilliant flower. If you've got quite a shady garden or a shady border, um, they love it. Um, so it is a good one. See what I mean about the the thinner stems, they don't always stay where you want them to. So I'm just going to pop in a couple of those, making sure that my um, colour balance is good throughout the design. And I'm going to pop in these more focal flowers as well. Um, I love a hydrangea, literally. I think it's one of my favourite flowers in the garden. And once you've planted it, um, apart from pruning it each year, you don't actually have to do anything with it, which is amazing. It comes back year after year after year. I'm going to pop some of those down in low. Wow. And these hydrangeas are a real beautiful shape. Um, the big round, the ones that my gran used to have outside her front door when I was a child, um, the big old fashioned ones can sometimes be a bit big and they can make designs look clunky. Whereas because it's got more of a kind of cone shape, they work so, so well in, um, in flower arrangements. I prefer them. Low 
powder and the beauty again of having chicken wire is if something doesn't look quite right you can pull it out and put it back in so that's how we are looking at the moment so really really pretty um, the hydrangeas because they're like a lime green color they also act kind of as a foliage but a decorative foliage which is good um, so now we have lots and lots of beautiful um, things that we can use so I'm still working on kind of the outline of the design um, I have a new variety of pod moss which I've grown this year these are stunning I think they're called a bourbon um, pod moss so so pretty the nice thing about cosmos as well they have so much movement to them and we do love some movement um, i have these in this kind of pink purple color and i also have um, some white ones as well which they do would work so so well i'm just gonna Take your time with what you are doing. There is absolutely no rush. Enjoy the process of arranging. It will be worth it. And we have my all-time favourite, the Phlox. Um, I'm so in love with Phlox. I don't think I'll ever not be in love with Phlox. They are just one of my favourite garden flowers ever. I'm going to kind of pop some of those down a little bit lower. Perhaps a few dancing out. good um, there's no point just to keep throwing things in if we can't see them I do have some apricots which we might we might put those in um, more of a tonal flower just to bring everything together but I am going to spice things up a little bit with my zinnias um, my zinnias this year have been amazing which makes up for um, the write-off that they were last year. So um, I have this little beauty, which is called Coral, I wanna say Coral Sunset, but I think that's a peony. Um, so we're gonna recess him right down low, um, a little bit like a focal flower, well he is a focal flower, and then I'm gonna that one in there and the nice thing about the zinnias is that they do come in different head sizes so um, these ones are called giants whereas these are more of the, the standard the standard ones so I'm just gonna work my way around and they are going to be my dancing flowers I really do want to, to see them coming out of the design and it just adds some brightness to it. Um, not
always remember the back. So like I said, this one is going on my dining room table. Um, so you will be able to see it from all directions. If you were doing it um, for a wedding, then obviously um, generally people would sit all around it. So it's really important that the design looks good from every angle. Um, something which I see a lot of florists um, forgetting when they're doing designs, especially when I see a picture and the photographer's taking it from the back and I'm like, ooh, okay, um, you can see all the mechanics, um, which isn't ideal. we have it there is our completed design um, filled with English grown flowers um, I am gonna go and pop this on my dining table so you can see what it looks like uh, but thank you for joining me once again if you've enjoyed this video um, please give me a thumbs up if you want to be notified when I do some more tutorials subscribe to the channel but until next time, enjoy your gardens and enjoy flowering.